to give us the greatest MCU segment of all time. Forget the Thanos mm-hmm. snap. Forget mm-hmm. Iron Man saving everyone. Forget yeah. it all. This is the She-Hulk clap. Forget Captain America there. pulling up, you know, the hammer. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. That's in the past, man. Forget yeah. it. It's about She-Hulk twerk. Yeah, She-Hulk booty. She was showing it off. <laughs> we needed it. You know, she's saving the world. That's right. One booty at a time. What are we know? doing here? What is this show even about? <laughs> what is happening with this show? I don't get yeah. it. It's just she doesn't want to be a superhero, filled. right? Uh, yeah. She no, doesn't she want doesn't. to be a superhero. She said it before. I don't want to be a superhero. I don't want to be a I superhero. Don't. I just want to twerk all day. I just want to twerk in my office with my <laughs> new high-profile client. Anyway, yeah. what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are so excited to bring you She-Hawk episode three. The twerking mm. episode. <laughs> Marvel twerk edition. I mean, I was like, wow, they really they really went for it. They I know. Really went for when it. When you found out that like Megan the Stallion was going to be on She-Hulk, I think a lot of people made the joke that like, oh, it, she's going to twerk. Like everybody's going to twerk in the it's going to be the twerking episode, but nobody was being serious. A lot of people were like theorizing like who she could be playing. You know, maybe she's playing a superhero, but she's no, she just twerked. Yeah. <laughs> I think this episode, and we're going to go through it, um, before I begin, I got Epic Mike with me, and of course, the lovely Minority Home. Um, to me, it seems like the writers are just trying to be cool with all the cool kids by adding Megan, the stallion, you know, which uh, everybody was like, I don't even know who that is, <laughs> unless you're like younger and yeah. like with the twerking and with the jokes and all that stuff, it's like, it just seems like, it seems like they're like the older kids trying to act cool. And right. it's not, it's, it's not, yes. it's not working. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like they're, they are catering to that younger demographic by bringing in Megan the stallion um, and uh, doing what she does, you know, twerking. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what she does. I just can't believe like, I, I mean, but that was the writing for like this, this episode was like Megan the Stallion. They kept saying that name over and over, and it's like they just they just put her in just to have like a a hip character mm-hmm. hanging out with She Hawk. Everyone now watch his twerk. You're just yeah. kind of like, wow. It, it was the weirdest, but I it was a really. It, I mean, they talked so much about her too, like yeah. unnecessarily amounts so of like, oh my gosh, or whatever. And you're like, okay. You, you and... thought you thought about Megan the Stallion? What? what? Yeah. You really <laughs> thought Megan the Stallion? Megan the Stallion. I, uh, I again I just like all the older folks going, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even know. Well let's get yeah. into the beginning of the episode. The episode starts with Jen uh busting in the maximum security prison to question abomination. Because if you remember uh, the last thing she saw in episode two was him in a like fight club, you know, it was like in a fight club and she's just busted. And she's like, what are you doing? Like you broke out of prison. And he's like, "Ah, I didn't really break out. Like someone took me. (laughs) He's very casual about it, which I'll I'll give it credit for. I actually like, you know, hit him. Uh, the actor Absolutely. Tim, Roth. It. Tim he, Roth is awesome. Yeah. yeah, Tim Roth. He played it really well. He's so very casual about it. Like it's not a big deal. This is this is the explanation. So he had his, his he's been very um, very casual, very zen this whole time. Like he he's found himself. He's re uh, reborn or whatever. Um, and so he's he's playing on that very very well. You know, she's freaking out. He's very calm. <laughs> I find it weird that they moved his character into some kind of Buddhist Zen master (laughs) with like eight wives to be. (laughs) Oh, God. And we see them. We see them this episode. We see them. I I didn't Uh, know what they were at first. I was like, what is going on here? And these are all his wonderful women praying so that they could all. Is that the writer? They could all live together. Is that the writer right there? Is that her? It might might be. be. Oh jeez! It might be that looks oh, like the no. writer right there. Oh no! Someone has to look up the credits. 
chose to be a cult member. Yep, Jessica Gao. Yep, it's her. <laughs> so, so she put herself in the show as like a member of the cult, as a as a desperate woman writing to a man in prison. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's. <laughs> Wow. Well, this is all that you need to know about the show when wow. the head showrunner Ryder decides to be one of Abomination's soulmates and inject herself into the show. Yeah. Like that. Well, maybe they just ran out of money and they didn't know what to do. So they just put her in. So Abomination yeah. was like, it was Wong. Wong. This guy right here that has a, <laughs> was that a LinkedIn? Yeah. If you notice, yeah. he was a Target sales associate. Like, yeah, and I'm like, what? <laughs> when he was living in like Comitage for like years? At what point was he over here doing Target stuff? Like, yeah, dude, Full it's so time too. And Why, why would you time? have that up things? Like somebody could just look you up, and be like, oh, you're the Sorcerer Supreme. Okay, I know, cool. like what? <laughs> that is so. That is so weird. It's just like, yeah. why? Why would that be there? It, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous for a gag. Like, yeah, it makes well, no that's... sense. And That's now it it's kind of like, like I really want to. I really want to see all of the superheroes' LinkedIn profiles and see what they say now. Uh, yeah, it's so stupid. Well, it's Target just sales I, associate. Got it. Yeah, I get that they're trying to go like, hey, let's let's hang, let's have fun with it, and like all the you know, it's all silly and stuff, and that's fine. But like when they do something like that, then the implications because it's all connected. You're like, wait a minute, but what? What? You know, I mean, I don't know. Some, no, of the, some of the, the sight gags are just... This is the, this is the type of humor that they're trying to go for. And it immediately follows up while they're discussing uh, Wong here with this mm -hmm. scene right here. And of course, I mean, I could play a little bit, but they're... The jokes on this scene, like, they try to play into uh, the cameos because she stops and she starts talking to the camera, as you can see. She's still driving. She talks to us. She break. What do they call it? Breaking the fourth wall or whatever. Yep. Yeah. And she says, "Don't worry, everyone. This show isn't about cameos. It's not about funny cameos. Ha ha ha. Remember what the show is." And then, and then it was like, "Well, except for Hulk and Wong, and whoever, and ha ha, ha yeah. ha. Remember what the show's about, everyone." Yeah. Flat out goes, <laughs> but it's still my show. And I'm like <laughs> very snarky. But, it's still my well. Show. I'm like before that though, when they were when her assistant is looking at Wan Wong, you know, it's it's like that's the only way that they can get a hold of him or locate him is by his LinkedIn profile, which <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah. Um, especially considering like she has a direct tie to someone in the Avengers, which is Bruce. Um, but also the fact that her assistant was like. Oh, don't worry. I sent him a thirst trap. Yes. Like that's that's the yeah. only way a man will respond to you is if you send them a thirst trap, a picture of her with books because he was a librarian. Yeah, yeah I'm like, what? Like, that's that's ridiculous. They're trying well, so hard to be cool that it's yeah, not cool. No, not at all. I mean, well, I I don't know. It's just funny to me sometimes when they don't think about stuff like this. The show started out with like a woman getting in a car accident and almost killing her cousin. And then like they're like, you know what would be really funny for her to break the fourth wall and let hands off the wheel while she's driving in traffic again. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I mean, we saw what happened last time you did that, you know. Oh now, yeah, and we have this, this this is the yeah. scene I pulled up as you as you saw. They went into some uh news broadcasting and She Hawk is a national or global phenomenon now, and everybody's talking about her. She's all over the news and they start to attack YouTubers yeah. and they like do. influencers. And this guy right here is so funny. Why do we have to have a, a woman when we already have a man? Basically saying, why do we have to have a woman Hulk when we already have a man? He goes, I have no problem with women superheroes. Just just make up your own. And we have right. heard that echo, like like those lines kind of echo through what we were, you know, what we talk about when they do all the swapping and all the things like that. And it's like, why do you got to take an old IP and change it all up? Why don't you create your own? That's basically what we've been saying about some of these franchises that have been ruined. And yet they took that and spun it, spinned it, flipped it, whatever you want to call it, 
and threw it in this show and had this guy say it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't <laughs> like, so like oh, so, this guy right here. This yeah. guy right here. He said he says so they emasculated the Hulk and made a female superhero. He yeah. said something to the effect of that. So they like emasculated the Hulk and made a female superhero and he's in a car. All of this shit right here. All of this stuff right here is like it's like they t looked at Twitter and they're like, "Oh my god, our detractors, our haters." And they put it in their show. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and the and thing it's is kind of like and it's kind of like they didn't even take like the actual criticism. Like people are criticizing no. the show because of the bad writing, because of this right here. It's not the fact that it's a woman superhero. It's a female superhero. People are upset because we have another female superhero. No, not at all. In fact, She-Hulk is an act is actually a good character. You know, people she has her fans at Marvel. Yeah. It's that they're using this character to push a feminist agenda to bully men yeah to emasculate well, men like that's what they're doing with this show so before we continue steph i want to say something the last time we did a review there was multiple people in the comment section that were saying wow look at this guy had to go and find a desperate woman to do the <laughs> show with them that me that you know and i was like i've known steph for years it's like, what are you talking about? Did I put a page out? Did I put an ad out? Desperately seeking a woman to review She-Hawk so I can have a woman's perspective. It's like me and Steph been talking about this for a while now. It's like she, wow. she's been on previous live streams. Yeah. Like we did shows together. It's like the fact that they came in to, to say that. And it was like it was like almost like the same kind of written comment from a bunch of people. And it's like this is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, but let's but let's uh let's praise women too, right? Unless they don't agree with you, like like me, I do not like this show. I think it sets women back. Actually, it doesn't really push women forward. It doesn't do any. Uh, it doesn't do us any favors. Um, and so yeah, but but since I don't agree, sure, I'm a desperate woman. Okay. The context, even they're using Twitter criticisms of a television show and like IPs. She's not an IP. She's a real person. So, like, why would anybody respond? Like, they're getting rid of all of our male superheroes. Like, there's still male superheroers everywhere in that world. I like, know. The only people I know. Episode. Like, I know. They're bringing, they're bringing them in as guest stars. Yeah. So the the idea is, but the idea is, if you throw that in there, then you can use that as leverage later to say, like, okay, well, all the criticism of the show, we already addressed that in the show. It's like, but you didn't because that doesn't make any sense. Like, people would be excited about a new superhero, but then, like Steph said, what they're ignoring is the fact that She-Hulk is an incredibly popular IP. People liked her character in the comic books. They stopped liking her that. when they were like, you know what? We want to make her, like, big and strong like the Hulk. So then they changed her character completely and changed her whole attitude. But, like, yeah, it it just... The, the, the trying to make parallels once, like, uh, Drunk 3 people said, we want to be cool. We want to make those people on Twitter feel like they're being heard on our show. It's like, okay. And that yeah. change, that change that they made to the She-Hulk character in the comics is what they're basing this show off of. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's awful. Not uh, classic She-Hulk at all. Now we're going to witness the worst CGI I think I have ever oh seen. God. This was absolutely terrible. Yeah. This was really bad. This CGI looks terrible. She walks in the office to meet... An old friend that she worked with at the old law firm before she was fired. She's so and, happy to see him. Too. Yeah. So yeah. they go back and forth with their pleasantries for whatever reason. And they discover, here we go, <laughs> that he was dating a person that he thought was Megan the Stallion. And I know many people are probably wondering, who the heck is Megan the Stallion? Well, she's a performer. And uh, it, I don't know. I guess you just need to Google her so you understand who she is. And uh, she likes to twerk. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he thinks he's dating this famous person. And the way Marvel advertised, they thought uh, we were talking about this before we recorded. They thought that Megan the Stallion was going to be maybe a character, not play herself. Right. 
so, so this this gentleman is just completely he's he's terrible he's a terribly written character they, they're basically taking all of the terrible male stereotypes and putting them all into this character including being completely stupid and oblivious to what's going on uh to anything that doesn't involve him because he's so surprised yeah. to see jen when she walks in when she, jen has been like <laughs> all, all over, over the, the news, news and yeah. she's clearly working at this firm, right? So his his case deals with a, a superhero, and he's just like, Jen? Like, oh, no, no, I didn't know she would be taken. Clearly, yeah. he, he has to know. He has to have some idea that she's working in this office. Why is he so surprised to see her? Why? Yeah. It makes it no make sense. Because he's it makes dumb. No sense. Yeah, but he's but also he's, a he's lawyer. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how dumb those lawyers are, you know? I mean, how did, yeah. So the it's twist so is he them. was dating a shapeshifter from Asgard that yeah. shapeshifted into Megan the Stallion. <laughs> so she could, uh, I guess, get gifts and money from the different people that she was dating. Uh, this guy right here. Right. So, and he's yeah. out a lot of money. A like, lot of money. And $175,000 her... he gave to a shapeshifter thinking it was the celebrity, Megan Thee Stallion. And what is her reaction to this? Let me laugh at you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. laugh at you. We've never heard of any of this from Asgard before. <laughs> All we've ever seen was Asgardians that look like people. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's light elves that can shapeshift as well. That's a thing. Um, I know you never saw any of them, but they were there. You know, so let's just get past that. <laughs> From new Asgard. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? So yeah. she, he's going to take this elf shapeshifter from Asgard to court. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm like, what is this? Show? This is like filler. Yeah. This is filler just to put in a pop star to appease the the younger people right. like to this is all this is it, this you could literally take this entire scene everything that deals with this entire story in the in in she hog and remove it and it doesn't progress nothing yeah. uh right. it's just a side story to fill time because i guess everyone was like we can't do 15 minute episodes mm -hmm. so yeah. stick something else in there yeah and you can have megan the stallion in your show um, absolutely the fact, the fact that like they they did a catfish story to embarrass this man further because they, they've he's already been the butt of jokes you know in the first yeah. couple of episodes and he's already been depicted as a terrible character but now something terrible has happened to him but we still need to make fun of it well yeah. then we get to wong wong shows up <laughs> and yeah. he's like hey i got your message so obviously he responded to the thirst oh, trap yeah, he fell for the thirst trap and, and like uh, ran he, in he spins his little <laughs> wheel and he gets in and uh jen walters was asking about abomination and he makes a statement he goes yep uh i needed him so i took him against his will he had to fight i put him back case closed i'm gonna leave now and he tries to make like little funny jokes because she's like saying, "Lo, look, you gotta, we gotta talk this way, you know, you gotta tell the DA, you gotta tell the people that are prosecuting him that won't grant his parole." And he's just like, "Well, can I just send them to the fifth realm or to the mirror world?" And yes. it's just like, "No, you can't." Right? <laughs> it's like yeah. again, uh, these Wong, jokes are terrible. <laughs> they they really are. Now we've already seen uh, from his LinkedIn profile that he's worked in the real world world before right he used to be a target employee so he must have some knowledge of i, I mean as a grown adult he has knowledge of the legal system he very well knows that yeah mm -hmm. you, you know you, you can't just take him out of prison yeah you just can't. you know what i mean there's he knows the consequences of all this stuff but mm -hmm. now where he's showing that like he he's choosing to ignore ignore it yeah. Let's just let's just uh oh you want me to erase people's memories I can't do that again call, calling back to the Spider Man movie with Doctor Strange, yeah. um and then he's just like oh we'll just send him to the mirror dimension it'll be fine like no she's doing something she has a she has, she has something to do and he's coming off as like ignorant of the laws of the of the world when yeah. he shouldn't well, be he shouldn't be ignorant of these laws he he lives no. in he lives in the world right he's yeah. worked in the world he used to be a target employee. Yep. So then we get into the next scene where we finally oh. meet the elf 
and God. she's been shape shifting into the lawyers and other things to try to get this case uh shut down she yeah. shape shifted into a lawyer to walk around the workplace saying sexist things uh then the lawyer had to come out and correct her and and so so now you get your first glimpse of the elf from asgard yep so again this is just the side story and then uh then we get back to the big case that's everyone is talking about and we get to meet abomination's wonderful eight was it eight or soulmates. seven? Uh, all these, all seven, these seven, no, six. yeah, seven soulmates. I think seven it's seven. Soulmates. Yeah, that he met through the prison pen pal system. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. And so, <laughs> yeah, somebody wrote that. And <sighs> yeah, this is, this is good television, right? So here. the hearing How is terrible. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. No, let ahead. me, let me, let me, let me say something about that. Okay. Um, and I, I am not ashamed to say this. All right. <laughs> there are women who write to prisoners in jail uh and the weirdest ones are the ones who write to serial killers and to murderers um and abomination has done terrible terrible things okay mm -hmm. but yet these women and and you see when he turns into abomination they find that attractive all right because they they basically get turned on by it by the way they're reacting to it when he's when he turns into abomination they get so excited and turned on by it that is the worst thing to depict about women yeah. because it's just showing that you are extremely lonely and you can't find another man outside of a prison yeah you have to write to these men in prison. Seven I, of them. I, I think it's terrible. Seven of them. I think it's terrible. <laughs> I, I honestly think it's terrible to depict like that that type of a woman. Um, I thought you were going to admit that you murdered somebody and have been to jail no, before. No, no, I was no. Concerned. But I, I think that's a terrible depiction of women because it's. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's very. It's it's just very like pandery and like very uh, dismissive of what that actually looks like for people. Yeah. I thought they were Asgardians at first. At one point, I was like, why are they wearing those robes with the hat, the hat things? What is this all about? And then they're like, <laughs> it's nah, like they're a cult. Just... It's like a cult. Yeah, <laughs> because he wants to go somewhere and like uh, do gonna meditation. He's going to live with them on, on this. Yeah, he's going to live with them and start like this meditation commune or some shit like that. It's it's like a cult. Like these are no. <laughs> so ridiculous. Gives now, the they testimony. Did say, they did say that like they don't know how to write all the lawyer stuff. And yeah. this is a big example of that yeah. because all of their witnesses are ridiculous. They're like, it's a oh, crying guard saying, you it's saved a crying my marriage. guard saying he's, he, you know, saved me from a bad marriage. Um, another person that said like he, Oh, prisoners. This is so great because prisoners aren't making like toilet wine anymore. They're making like toilet, something else. Kombucha. I, toilet kombucha yeah, yeah, as right. if that's like a, a great thing. And then like, Oh, the library is such a great place. It's, not just a quiet place to get shanked anymore like there what these are the people <laughs> these are, the, these yeah. are your witnesses yeah. it's just a, a one big joke and they clearly are showing us that they do not know how to write like lawyer stuff good stuff yeah so it's embarrassing wong yeah. shows up and he says yeah i did it and everything's fine and then abomination real quick turns into abomination to say hey i got control and turns back Mm -hmm. And freaks oh everyone God. out. Now that was a little over dramatic. That was, was locked up so a, over dramatic. Yeah, in a cage, and everyone's like, ah, ah, ah. They're yeah. like running yes. and pulling their hair, and you're just like, what the heck? He's yeah, like, she's like he's screaming like, at him, stop, don't do that. And like, I'm like, he's yeah, that wasn't that was played overly dramatic. It's like Jen freaked everybody else out by getting so freaked out about the fact that he changed into yeah. abom he transformed into abomination, and like the the. <laughs> They they raised a valid question, right? Like, well, he can transform into abomination anytime he wants, right? And then yeah. he's like, "Oh, let me let me detract let me from that. You. Let me just show yeah. you. I have I'm in full control now." Jen knows what he's about to do. She can see it. She can guess what he's about to do. She's already set the tone, right? Yeah. She she wants she wants her client out on bail. They're their main thing fi their final thing that they have a problem with is that he's going to turn into abomination and ruin things right so instead of remaining calm she starts freaking out no 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 yeah. no don't do it don't do it so 
she's setting the tone for everybody else. Like, why, why is the lawyer freaking out? Why, why, why is she yeah. freaking out? And then he turns into abomination. Everybody freaks out along with Jen. So it's kind yeah. of like, maybe you shouldn't have done that. Maybe you should have been like, oh, don't worry, everybody. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, you know, set the tone for yeah. what your client is about yeah. to do. And then, like, you see that he's changed into abomination and he's talking with his voice. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> this normal voice. He's like, I'm in control. I'm totally in control of it. Yeah. Like, it's, it sounds almost ridiculous. But yet, everybody around him is still freaking out. The, the parole board is yeah. over the top with it. It's like yeah. they've never seen this. It's like they, they never, it's like they never saw the footage of him as abomination when he escaped from prison. And they're like, I didn't know he could look like that. Ah, they just start screaming. It's like, yeah, control yourselves, it's... please. He's not, he's clearly not escaping. And, and also ignoring talking. the fact that they have right there next to the cage a superhero who yeah. doesn't change. They have two she's superheroes. Like, right? She's they running have... back and forth, going like, oh my God. Yeah. And she never <laughs> once changes. Wong just stands there. And then, like, yeah, like you can see, like, he's look trying to defend Wong. against he's, the guards. He's protecting. Like, what? Yeah. He's against the guards. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, Wong is like, you know? I'm, I'm not going to make everything worse, but I'm going to make everything worse. <laughs> like, oh my god. It's like they have two superheroes. If if he's lying and if he escapes, they have two superheroes there who can yeah. help, who can take care well, of it. But no, everybody's just freaking out. It's just way over the top. I don't think he can get out of his cage anyway. That's why they put him in that security. Um, uh -huh. I mean, he's standing there holding his Crocs. Right. Yeah. So this part really irked me. Now that Abomination is on parole or is set, be, to set free... Jen leaves the prison and is kind of like attacked by reporters. And someone asked the question, um, were you shot by gang members? And she doesn't answer. And that is a direct slap to everyone that knows the origin story of she Hulk is that is exactly what happened to her. She was shot and in the comics. And then of course we all know what happened. He had to Bruce Banner had to give, you know, her blood to save her life. And yeah. because he did, she is now the She-Hulk. So I was like, why do you have to like rub it in that you change the origin story? Yeah. Like, what the heck? And yeah. so they they did that right here. And basically, this is the end of the show. Like, honestly, there's really nothing else. And I could, we're going to speed through a lot of this. Like, like, and this was the joke. Honestly, this actually, this was the joke. I went, I went past it. A little too quickly they're all at the bar here and everyone sits down she leans in looks at the camera and she goes she goes isn't this convenient that we can put a and b together yeah she's basically, like mer she's merging telling, the story merging the storylines yeah basically she's telling everybody she goes okay here's where it's all connected everyone uh -huh. she's telling Look. the audience are you with us like i know you saw this one part and then now there's another part and she looks in she tells us all no. A and B is about to be connected. Yeah, this, all... is, this is the writers patting themselves on the back. Merging the storylines. Nice. Yeah, so <laughs> like, she tells what? us. So basically all that happened was they go back to court for that guy that's suing. You know, he's suing the shapeshifter because he wants his money back. She has shapeshifted as a judge, as a lawyer. It's not even important. Mm -hmm. They called Jen Walters to the stand and they said, do you know this man? And she's just like. Yeah, he's a pig. He's this. He's got. Yeah. He's conceited. He's you know. He's all these things, and and they said, "Do you?" The judge was like, "Do you honestly think he thought he was dating Megan the Stallion?" Like, and, and she goes, "Yeah, like the the world he lives in in his mind. Yeah, he probably really did think Again. that he basically saying he thinks he's that good enough to get someone like Megan in his mind when we all know." He's not. Yeah. And Again, so he wins the judgment. Terrible lawyer writing. Terrible yeah. lawyer writing. Because the judge even tells him, like, it's on you to prove that your client is that incompetent, that that dumb to think that he actually thought he was being duped by Megan the Stallion. And he thought his best bet to win the case was to put Jen on the stand and say, yeah, I've known him for a long time. He's a really terrible person. He's, yeah. he's that delusional. He's that he's deluded. That he delusional. Thinks he's, he thinks he's so great that he could actually pull Megan the Stallion. Yeah. But it's all her opinion. Like, where's the evidence? Where where are the actual like it's on him to prove that, right? But his his best way is to put one one witness on the stand saying, like, yeah, I've known him for a long time. He's crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's 
so yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's so, so weird. ridiculous. And then they they like uh they put his best bet, right? His best thing was to be like judge. He even says when when the elf impersonates the judge, he's like, "This is good for us." But he never uses that. He never uses that. That's like evidence nope. right there in front of everybody that yeah, she will do something for her own benefit. He could have said she impersonated my client to try and get out of this lawsuit. She impersonated me when we were, and there's witnesses to that. She impersonated me leaving the room. So she, she, she does all of this stuff for her own benefit, for yeah. her own gain. But no, none of that is brought in. None of no. that is recognized. <laughs> it's just Jen. She saved my case because she's going to tell everybody what a terrible person this is, how delusional, how, how awful he is, how he thinks he's such a 10. It, Who's it's, it's that ridiculous. girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So the elf gets uh, convicted, and then they tried to make a Thor joke, where she uh, quotes a line from oh, Thor, yeah. where he's like, "Asgard is not a place; it's a people." And the judge was like, "You can't say that. Thor yeah. quotes don't count in my courtroom." Ha 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 ha! No, it was bad. It was, bad. <laughs> it was just yeah. so. It was just so bad. And then Megan, the stallion, is actually in the court. She's sitting in the back. Yeah. And, of course, this guy who just won his case was like, do you guys think I got a shot? Like, she showed up. Like, yeah, maybe I, I got go a back? shot in dating here. I, be, yeah. At this point, the show is basically over. Like I, like I'm saying, like, I can fast yeah. forward. Um, He gets, you know, abomination, gets set free. He's got to wear an seven, inhibitor. Seven, and these are seven. all his wonderful women praying. So that they is could that all the writer, they could all live together. Is that the writer right there? Is that her? It might, might be. be. Yep, Jessica Gao. Yep, ah! it's her. <laughs> For some reason, this reminds me of some group in the comic books. I can't remember who they. Oh were. yeah, the uh, the it's like not the Wrecking Crew. The um, Wrecking Crew, yes, yeah, something like that. That's right. Yeah. Underball and Wrecking Crew. Yep, that's what that's it was. That's it. That's it. I knew it. I knew that they look familiar. Thank you, Mike. And yep, they have a goal here to extract blood from She-Hulk. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they attack her. <clears throat> she turns into She-Hulk and you know destroys them. One of them tries to stab her with a needle. The needle gets all bent, and they leave. And they say. Our boss is going to be mad. So yeah. there's that aspect that's happening that someone's trying to get her blood for some reason. Yeah. Well, what's funny to me is that she gets caught in this alley and they're attacking her and the guy is standing way back there, obviously, with the needle. They could have extracted the needle right then and there. And she's like, oh, ah, oh. and she goes, oh, wait. And then she turns into the Hulk. And I know that's supposed to be played as a joke. But what's funny to me is like, the whole point and the whole big deal about her was like, I'll be fine on my own because I can turn into the Hulk whenever I need to. I don't have to worry about like being scared and doing all this stuff anymore. And the very first time she gets into a situation where she's terrified. Well, we've seen it twice now. Anytime something bad happens, her first inclination is to freak out and get scared. To give us like, the greatest MCU segment of all time. Forget the Thanos yeah. snap. Forget yeah. Iron Man saving everyone. Forget no. it all. This is the She-Hulk clap. Forget Captain America here. pulling up, you know, the hammer. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. That's in the past, man. Forget no. it. It's about She-Hulk twerk. Yeah, She-Hulk booty. She was showing it off. <laughs> we needed it. You know, she's saving the world. That's right. One booty at a time. What are yeah. we doing here? What is this show even about? <laughs> what is happening with this show? I don't get yeah. it. It's just she doesn't want to be a superhero, filled. right? Yeah. Uh, she no, doesn't she want doesn't. to be a superhero. She said it before. I don't want to be a superhero. I don't want to be I a superhero. Don't. I just want to twerk all day. I just day want to twerk in my office with my <laughs> new high-profile client. God. What a terrible episode. That's it. That's it. Probably yeah. ended on God help us all. 